Welcome to Lively Lewis Stories. Buckle up, because you're about to join Levi and Ivy on an adventure. All you need is your imagination, and off, off we, we go! go! Lively Lewis Stories! Hey there, awesome friends! Guess what? We're super thrilled to share some exciting news with you. We've got our very own Lively Lewis merchandise. Woohoo! Grab your parents and head over to LivelyLewisShop.com or simply click on the link below in our show notes. Now, let's dive into today's story. Levi and Ivy returned to the year 2023 with jackets full of snow. Mom almost didn't recognize them bundled up in their big coats and hats. You scared me! holding a hand over her heart. Sorry, Levi was still laughing. It was getting too cold. And Levi threw a snowball at me, Ivy complained. Well, I had to, Levi reasoned. It was the ice age. I had to throw at least one snowball. Mom shook her head. Her two quirky time-traveling kids always got into shenanigans wherever they went. At least they kept their coats zipped up and made it home in one piece. Is the watch okay? asked mom. Ivy dug through all her coat pockets and eventually found the time traveling watch. It's here. Mom nodded along. That's good. So where are you two going next? Mm, Somewhere beachy, said Levi. I'm still cold. We should go somewhere a lot warmer. What do you think, Ivy? Let's do it, said Ivy. The two of them disappeared upstairs and returned wearing their swimsuits. Levi was a scatter of blue and green dots while Ivy's was a bright bubblegum pink. They also had their beach towels tucked under their arms. All right, said mom. You remember the rules? Levi and Ivy nodded. No talking to people, no calling attentions to ourselves, no interfering with time. Good, said mom. Be home by dinner. Oh, they would definitely be home by then. Who would want to miss dinner? Levi put the watch in his palm and thought of a beach they could go. With all the time at their fingertips, they could literally go anywhere within any time frame. Levi thought hard. What's taking you so long? Ivy said impatiently. I want to go to the beach. Shh, said Levi. Let me think. You're taking too long. Just let me do it. No. Ivy swiped for the watch, but Levi pulled back in the nick of time. He thought quickly about the beach, the warm sunsets, and the west coast before Ivy could take the watch. Take us to the west Whoa, said Ivy, accidentally bumping into him. The spell was incomplete. And before they knew it, they were already being dragged into a time wormhole. Stars and circles swirled by at the speed of light until Levi and Ivy were promptly deposited in a dirt mound. Thanks a lot, Ivy, muttered Levi, dusting off his knees. Look what you did. Well, you were being too slow, she said back. They stood up and gathered their now dusty beach towels. There wasn't a beach in sight. All around were miles and miles of dirt with a few sparse grass heaps. It was windy too. Their calves were being bristled by dirt particles and scratchy sand. Levi, said Ivy, where did you take us? I was about to say the West Coast, but you didn't let me finish. If they weren't in the West Coast, then maybe... Just maybe, they were in the West? The Wild West? Okay, this is too hot here, said Ivy. We need a beach with cool winds. Take us to the West Coast. Levi pulled out the watch. Your wish is my command. Take us to the West Coast in 1980. Nothing happened. Levi frowned and squinted at the watch. The little second hand wasn't moving. In fact, the whole watch was still. Levi's eyes grew big. Ivy? Yes? I think we broke it. Ivy quickly took the watch back and shook it a few times. But even with all her little tricks and gadgets, she couldn't make the watch work either. Great. Just great. Now what do we do? Unfortunately, that turned out to be the least of their worries. From behind a great rock mountain, they heard the pounding of hooves approaching. And it didn't sound like just one horse, more like 10 or 20. Uh Uh-oh, Ivy whispered. A big horde of Native Americans came riding around the bend, yipping and squealing. Levi and Ivy grabbed their beach towels and ran the opposite way as fast as they could. But even their fast feet were no match for the horses. 
and within a few seconds, the natives had them surrounded. Levi backed up against Ivy, holding her arm tight in his hand. All of them looked strong and had long, beautiful black hair. One of the men hopped down from his horse. He had a feather in his hair and his shirt was tan and frilly. He most certainly didn't look like he knew English, but Levi tried anyways and gave a timid, hi. The native man cocked his head, studying the two kids like they were a piece of art. Finally, the man looked down and saw the watch in Ivy's hand. His eyes widened and suddenly he didn't look so scary anymore. He opened his mouth and started to speak until a loud gunshot ripped through the air. Immediately, the natives yipped and fled the scene. Even the man hurried back on his horse and was out of there in no time. Levi and Ivy held their arms up to protect themselves from all the dust flying around. And when the dust settled and the natives had all disappeared, only one man and a horse stood before them. You should count yourselves lucky. I didn't have to miss. Wait a minute, thought Levi. That wasn't a man at all. It was a woman, a big, tough woman. You weren't really gonna hurt them, were you? Asked Ivy. The woman turned her scowl over to them. Her frown seemed to be cemented to her face. What were you doing wearing that peacock feather get up? Levi and Ivy looked down, realizing they were still wearing their swimsuits and beach towels. It made sense they looked strange to someone in the Wild West. It's a swimsuit, Levi was honest. We're time travelers. The woman tipped back her head and laughed. A laugh big and hearty and not so different from Santa Claus. Well, I'll be. Ain't never heard a term so crotchety. Dancing through time, you is? Yeah, and we need your help, said Levi. Our watch is broken. Levi held it up to the woman, hoping that it would be proof that she needed. The woman hopped down from her horse wearing brown clothes and big brown boots. She pointed her long nose at the watch and gave it a look. That's some device, that is. The winds picked up, bristling Ivy's hair. The woman made a gruntly noise. I guess you two young'uns better come with me if you don't want to be wolf chow. Ivy breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, I'm Ivy and this is Levi. What's your name? The woman spat on the ground. Name's Jane. Some call me Calamity Jane. Calamity? Ivy frowned. What does that mean? Oh, that was on my spelling test last year, Levi said. I think it means joyful and good-hearted. The woman laughed even harder at that. Levi and Ivy both hopped on her horse with her and did their best to hold on. Apparently, this Calamity Jane was a good horse rider because she had no problem going fast. Jane took them to the cabin not far from town. She was even nice enough to give Levi and Ivy new clothes to change into, although they were five times too big. Just keep rolling them, said Jane. Yep, just like that. Ivy did as she was told. Levi put on his new hat and caught a look at himself in the mirror. He looked like a true Westerner now. Thank you for the clothes, said Levi, but we really need someone to help fix our watch. Do you know anyone here who could help? Ain't nobody gonna help you with a twaddle like that, Jane said gruffly but honestly. Your best chance is to join a family farm and get on that way. But we have to get back. Our mom's making dinner. Calamity Jane leaned forward in her chair. Is that right? Well, tell me about this here future. I'd love to hear some more. Who runs the West in your time? Is it Lawless? Levi looked at Ivy. Uh, not really. A lot of people follow the rules. When the light turns red, all the cars stop. And they don't go until it turns green. Jane was looking at them funny until suddenly, like a hawk, she turned her head towards the window. Levi stood up and tried listening too. More horses were coming. Hide, said Jane. Quick, now! Levi grabbed Ivy and the two of them ventured back into the room behind the bed. Ivy found herself trembling. Who is it? Why do we have to hide? Just listen to Jane, Levi whispered back. Jane came in a moment later and grabbed her big, long rifle. She crouched down beside the two of them. Don't you worry none, she said. Ain't nobody got a better shot than me. Levi and Ivy hoped she was right. The front door burst open and they heard several pairs of boots pounding on the wood floors. Men were laughing and rummaging through things. Calamity Jane leaned and studied the intruders. Well, I'll be, she said. It's the kid. Levi poked his head out and saw a man in a black hat. He seemed younger than Jane, maybe a teenager, but certainly not as young as he or Ivy. His grin was elfish and charming. He didn't look like a kid to me, said Levi. I'm a kid. Jane scoffed. You ain't never seen a kid like this. He ain't just any outlaw. You best stay put, kiddos. 
Jane sneaked down to the hall with her big rifle ready. Levi and Ivy both clutched each other and waited. Men were yelping in surprise and running out of the cabin. Both Levi and Ivy didn't come out until they heard Jane's big boom full your voice yelling at someone. Ivy shook Levi's arm. I don't think calamity means joyful, Levi. I'll fancy I'll get quite a dime off you, kid. Jane was saying, Now, now, said a male sing-song voice. We don't need to be running to no posses now. Levi and Ivy saw the kid alone in the room with his hands held up. Even despite having a rifle pointed at him, he seemed relaxed and at ease. Didn't know this place was occupied is all. Jane barked out a laugh. I heard you all right, Billy the Kid. No good lying and cheating outlaw trying to steal too. How's that going for you now, chucklehead? Not dandy, Billy the Kid admitted. Levi and Ivy crept out of the room until Billy could see them. At least they were safe with Jane now, but that still didn't solve their time traveling problem. Ivy was the first to ask, your name's Billy, right? Do you know anyone who can fix our watch? Billy looked at them. I ain't never seen a watch like that. And you ain't never gonna again, said Jane. Not while you're rotting in the goose gal. Put that thing away, Ivy. Ain't no one gonna believe you time jumping. Ivy sighed. All hope was starting to dwindle, but Levi didn't want to give up. Grabbing the watch out of Ivy's hand, he tried one last time to get them home. Take us home! Then, for a split second, all of them, Levi, Ivy, Jane, and Billy, were in the Lewis house. Mom was still cooking something on the stove and faced away. Jane and Billy looked like they'd just seen a ghost. Ivy opened her mouth. Mom? But in a blink of an eye, they were back in the Wild West, back in Jane's cabin. Based on everyone's faces, the little time jump into the future wasn't just a figment of imagination. Did you see that? Said Billy. Uh, I, 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 I think I... Jane's couldn't finish her sentence. By golly, Ivy, you was right. I ain't never seen a place like what I just saw. That was our home, said Levi, and that was our mom. We really need to get home. Now, Calamity Jane wasn't so quick to diminish them. Even Billy the Kid didn't have a thing to say. After a couple of moments, Jane started to nod. I gots to get you kids home. Billy the Kid squatted in front of them. You heard of me in the future, chap? Billy the Kid, the myth, the legend. Oh, squash it, kid, muttered Jane. Ain't no one in the future gonna remember you. Levi remembered hearing Billy's name in history class, but the young man's ego was already the size of the moon and there was no good in inflating it further. We just really need to get home. Billy the Kid stood up. I'll help get you two's home if you give me a good word in the future. I want to be remembered. Fine, said Ivy. Just take us to someone who will help us, please. And we'll do just that, said Jane. And then it's who scout time for you, kid. Calamity Jane, Levi, and Ivy hopped back on her horse. They let Billy ride on his own, but his wrists were tied so that he couldn't escape. They rode into town and Levi and Ivy were blown away by everything they saw. There were so many buildings and saloons and cowboys riding horses. It looked straight out of a movie. They rode through town and up on a hill where men were working on building a railroad. Sounds of hammers hitting the metal filled the air and the men's cheeks were black with oil and dust. Look at that, Ivy said incredulously. That's so cool. Why the railroad? Levi questioned. Smartest man I know works this, said Jane. He's right here. Inside a small wooden room, they met the notorious famous man, a scientist called Buck. He had a furry mustache and a pair of spectacles and spent a whole hour examining their watch. I don't even know where to begin, said Buck. Can you fix it, sir? Buck picked up his antique conductor and books. With these, oh no, to fix something as advanced as this, you'll need a miracle. Ivy's lips trembled. She wanted to go home so bad, but if the smartest man in the Wild West couldn't fix it, who could? Calamity Jane patted them on the back and led them back outside. But when they saw their horse, they noticed one terrible detail. Billy the Kid and his horse were gone. Where did he go? said Levi. Oh, shoot, muttered Jane. Get on the horse now! The horse whined before giving chase out into the desert. Up ahead, they could see the faint cloud of dust where Billy was heading. Levi and Ivy held on to each other for dear life so they wouldn't fall off. 
Jane tapped her horse to go faster and faster. They were catching up, but it was still such a long way away. And Billy was cackling with laughter. Suddenly, a rope came out of nowhere, looping around Jane's horse. Everyone was jerked backwards, including Jane's rifle, which clattered to the ground. Levi looked around in a daze, hearing the distant sound of yipping. It was the natives. This time, the natives wrapped them up too, which didn't make Jane too happy. Let go of me. Ivy recognized the native man from before coming off his horse. Again, he was staring at their watch. He came up to Levi and Ivy and touched the watch, saying something that both of them couldn't understand, but it sounded kind. I think he wants to help us, said Ivy. Ivy looked into the man's big brown eyes. The man nodded. Okay, said Levi. I guess we should give him a shot. Levi turned to Clamney's Jane, still struggling in her restraints. Be nice, Jane. I think they can fix our watch. I don't see how, Jane grumbled. The natives led them back to their tribe with a sprinkling of tents by the water. As Levi, Ivy, and Jane were led through, many other natives came out of their tents to watch them, making Levi feel like a tropical fish in the aquarium. The native man took the watch and put it on a rock in the center of a pile of bark. The rest of the natives gathered around and one even started to light the bark on fire. Levi lunged forward, no, don't! Ivy grabbed his arm. It's okay, let him try. Pretty soon the bark was entirely engulfed in flames. The watch sat untouched by the rock. Beside Levi and Ivy, the native man walked up with a stick and began humming something. The rest of the natives joined in. Some even danced around the fire. All Levi and Ivy knew to do was to bow their heads respectfully and wait. After a while, the chanting died down and the only sound was the spitting and crackling of the fire. The native man reached out, plucked the rock out of the ceremony space. He handed it to Levi, who found it too hot to the touch, but amazingly, the watch hands were moving. It worked, Levi cried, it worked. Thank you so much, said Ivy. The native man bowed his head. He had his fellows come and untie the three of them. After what Jane had seen, she didn't seem as intent on getting her revenge anymore. She walked up to the two with a reluctant smile. Well, what do you know? You got something right. Be nicer to them, Ivy scolded. No more rifles or bad words. Jane barked a laugh. We'll see. I guess the two of you are off now. I think so, said Levi. Sorry about Billy the kid getting away. Oh, the dawn would have been nice, but I'll be fine. Old Billy knows not to come near my place no more. You have a good trip. Ivy ran over and gave Calamity Jane a big hug. Thank you for all your help, Jane. Jane wriggled away from her and spat on the ground. Yeah, yeah, all right. Get, get on, yous. Levi held the watch in the palm of his hand and took one last look around the Wild West. The natives, the tents, and the beautiful open scenery. They would miss this place, but they missed home more. Take us home. In the next moment, Levi and Ivy found themselves back in the kitchen. Mom was setting plates on the table and dad was filling everyone's cups with water. Levi and Ivy threw their arms around mom. We're back, mom, we're back. Mom looked confused. Yeah, you are. Earlier than expected, dinner isn't quite ready yet. What in the world are you two wearing? Said dad. I thought you guys went to the beach. Ivy hugged dad too. Oh, it was amazing, dad. We went somewhere by accident. We met so many new people and friends. Levi smiled as he listened to his sister retell the story. Every once in a while, he would remember Billy the Kid and the Native Man and Calamity Jane. And he thought to himself that maybe in certain circumstances, Calamity does mean good-hearted after all. Did you learn a lesson from this story? If so, what was it? And parents, do your kids have a story idea? Leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, the idea and your kid's name, for a chance to join Levi and Ivy on their next adventure. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Come back for more.